Hello everybody. This is a short recording. It's going to cover Chekhov's The Lady with the Little Dog and Reed Whitmore's poem For the Life of Him and Her. This belongs, this is a piece of the characters and relationships block or module in D2L. We're going to do two modules from the characters and relationships block this one and then another one that covers several poems. We're going to start, like I said, with the lady with the little dog. I think this is the oldest story that's on our syllabus this semester. Uh, you can see it right here. This is a story from 1899, so it's uh, over 120 years old. Uh, this is a short story by a Russian writer, Anton Chekhov. Chekhov is super important in the modern literature canon, the scope of modern literature. He's sometimes considered like the father of modern short stories. He's famous enough to have a literary rule named after him, a rule called Chekhov's Gun that has to do with um, what's in the, what belongs in stories and what's not. It usually has to do with guns, and if a gun shows up in a story, sooner or later the gun has to be fired, somebody has to be shot, something like that. This is one of Chekhov's most famous stories, um, in part because of the way it's structured, and in part because of the way that it develops what most people consider the main character, Dimitri. Um, I've been teaching this story for years, and there is often misunderstanding or disagreement about what happens at the end of the story, which is one of the reasons I've kept teaching it. There is also often disagreement about what's going to happen, what the ending of the story means, and, and what's going to happen to these people, or what the story is trying to suggest is about to come for these people. And because of that disagreement, and because of that, I don't want to say confusion, but something along those lines, it is often useful to start backwards from this story. The story has four sections. The first section deals with Dimitri and Anna meeting. They're in a place called Yalta. If you don't know where Yalta is, it is worth looking up. Um, it is a popular vacation area. In It is on the border between the Ukraine and Russia. You can see it right there. You can see that it's this coastal town. This is Ukraine. This is Russia. Um, it's on the Black Sea. So when they meet in that first section, they are in a popular vac vacation spot, and they are both married, but their spouses, Dimitri's wife and his husband, are not there yet. Um, Dimitri is on a vacation by himself. Anna is waiting for her husband to join her, but he never joins her. And that leads us, you get the first section where they meet, uh, they get closer. Let's see here. Uh, they meet. He meets her through the dog. That's how the story gets its title, The Lady with the Dog. Um, the second section is about them having sex for the first time. They get intimate for the first time. The way that they both react to that experience, which is Dimitri sort of just blowing it off. You know, he got what he wanted. Versus Anna, who is, who is sort of destroyed, feeling really guilty, disgusted with herself, afraid that she has become this trashy, awful person. She even uses the word trash, depending on which translation you read. Uh, the third section, at the end of the second section, they go their separate ways. Anna's husband asks her to come home. She comes home. Uh, you can see that right there. The train moved off rapidly. Um, and then Dimitri, it's time for me to go north, thought Gurov as he left the platform. High time. He goes back to Moscow. Um, the suggestion, one of the common suggestions in this story is that he lives in Moscow, she lives in St. Petersburg, although where she lives is never named, all you ever get is S, but those are two of the major cities in western Russia. Um, the third section, he goes back home, he goes back to his family, he goes back to his job, back in, all back in Moscow, but unlike what has always happened before with all these other affairs he has had, he is different. He has changed, he can't forget her, he can't get over her. He tries to tell this other guy that he works with, this friend of his, how different she is, how interesting he, she is, and, and the other guy just blows him off. But finally, because he can't forget her, he goes and finds her and tells her how he feels. And then the fourth section, let's get down to it. The third section is long because he has to find her, talk to her. The difference is, though, 
Um, when he tells her that at the intermission at the play that they're at, this uh, this is this play, or I'm sorry, this story is so old that it was before there were movies. So he get, when he talks to her, he talks to her at the intermission at a theater at a play. Um, she says that she feels the same way. She hasn't been able to forget him, to get over him, and that she's going to come and find him. And so then in the fourth section, and Anna Sergeyevna began coming to see him in Moscow. Once in two or three months, she left. There's the S. Most people read it as St. Petersburg, but it could be something else. Telling her husband that she was going to consult the doctor about an internal complaint. And her husband believed her and did not believe her. In Moscow, she, slaved at, she stayed at the Slavyansky Bazaar Hotel. And at once sent a man in red cap to Gurov. Girl, I went to see her. No one in Moscow knew of it. And so they begin this affair where she comes to him. That's part of the important um, portion of this is that she has changed from when they first were intimate in Yalta, where she is trash and can't believe, where she thinks she is trash and can't believe this awful thing she has done and is feeling just terrible and guilty about it. Well, now she's all in and she's, she's not only totally into it, into the affair, but willing to come to him, willing to lie to her husband about it. She's willing to come to him, uh, just like sort of reciprocating uh, how he came to find her. Um, and then you get to the end of the story. They've been coming, she's been coming to see him. They've been meeting in this hotel. And then you get uh, what most people read as the most important part of this entire story. It is this part right here, a few paragraphs from the end. He went up to her, took her by the shoulders to say something affectionate and cheering, and at that moment he saw himself in the looking glass. Very often in stories, in movies, in shows, when somebody looks in a mirror, it's an important moment because it is this moment where they realize something about themselves or understand something about themselves. And that's the case in this story. His hair was already beginning to turn gray, and it seemed strange to him that he had grown so much older, so much plainer during the last few years. The shoulders on which his hands rested were warm and quivering. He felt compassion for this life, still so warm and lovely, but probably already not far from beginning to fade and wither like his own. Why did she love him so much? He always seemed to women different from what he was, and they loved in him not, some, not himself, but the man created by their imagination, whom they had been eagerly seeking all their lives. And afterwards, when they noticed their mistake, they loved him all the same. Not one of them had been happy with him. Time passed. He had made their acquaintance, got on with them, parted, but he had never once loved. It was anything you like, but not love. And if you think of this story, and specifically what has happened between him and Anna, time passed, he made their acquaintance, got on with them. That's what happened with him and Anna. They parted, and, and they parted and went their separate ways, and he forgot about it. What is different is that is not what has happened this time. He had never once loved, except he fell in love with her, couldn't forget her, had to go find her. And only now, when his head was gray, he had fallen properly, really in love for the first time in his life. Anna and he loved each other like people very close and kin, like husband and wife, like tender friends. They forgave each other for what they were ashamed of in their past. They forgave everything in the present and felt that this love of theirs had changed them both. That's a really important idea because what that idea shows you and what that introduces in this story it, it introduces two concepts that are worth talking about and that um, are on the syllabus for the course. One is realization. This is an Arist uh, Aristotle concept, Aristotelian concept. It has to do with Aristotle argues that there are three things that all stories need to have. There is reversal, which is when the plot of the story changes direction. Things are going good, then they go bad. Or things are going bad, then they turn good. Um, this story has a sort of reversal when he is missing her, finds her, she agrees to see him. So he is lonely and missing her. Then the story reverses course and they start towards working things out. This is the bit, what this story is really built on though is not reversal, it is built on realization. He has this realization that despite the fact that he is, you know, at least 40 years old or, or around 40 years old, he is married, he has two kids, the way he feels for her, he has fallen in love for the first time in his life. It is this to He has totally changed. She has totally changed him. The way he feels about her is totally different than anything he has ever felt. Um, and you see right here, here's the end of the story. Then they spent a long while taking counsel together, talking of how to avoid the necessity for secrecy. 
how to stop doing what they've been doing, how to get to a different level in their relationship, how to stop her having to come see him in secret um, for deception, for living in different towns, not seeing each other for long at a time. How could they be free from this intolerable bondage? How, how, he asked, clutching his head, how? And it seemed as though in a little while the solution would be found and then a new and splendid life would begin and it was clear to, clear to both of them that they had still a long, long road before them. And the most complicated and difficult part of it was only just beginning. This is what, when I, when I talk about this story in classes, people read this ending in different ways. The common understanding of this, and what I would suggest, and you can disagree with this, the story seems to support this reading and, is, and be trying to push you in this direction, is this idea that they can't go on this way and what they have realized because he has realized that he is in love with her and she is in love with him and, and has been, but it's taken him a while to finally realize how deeply he feels for her and how different it is from everything he's had before, including his marriage. Um, what you get right here is this acceptance, this realization that they want to be together. And the, that the most complicated and difficult part was only just beginning, that what is about to have to happen is they are both going to go through divorces and be together, that he, he will leave his wife, leave his children, and be with her, this person that he loves. The, the love part, they've got that part, but the complicated and difficult part, the breaking apart from the people that they are with and becoming together and living in the same town and being together in this practical, constant way, this is just the beginning of really acting out the way that they feel for each other. So you have, he has this realization right here when he looks in the window, uh, or I'm sorry, when he looks in the mirror, um, and that triggers in him this realization that they have to change their practical circumstances, that they have to stop meeting in secret and actually act out the way they feel for each other. If you read the rest of the story backwards from that realization and from that moment, and if you accept that reading of this story, it is, very, it is very easy to read this story through the other concept that most people think is important about this story, which is dynamic character. And we're going to talk about this more, this idea, if you notice it's on the vocabulary for later in the semester and the end of the semester. Um, but one of the central ideas uh, about characters and stories is static characters versus dynamic characters. Static characters stay the same, they don't change. Um, what they want stays the same, the way they act stays the same, their behaviors, their actions stay the same. Dynamic characters, the reason they are in this story is to change, and they change in the course of the story. The common understanding here is that by, especially by the time you get to that mirror scene, what is happening to Dimitri is this completing of the change that has happened to him that begins when Anna gets on the train and leaves at the end of the second section and then he goes back home, he goes back to Moscow. He can't, he can't forget her, like he's always forgotten all these other affairs, all these other women that he's met, all these other women that he's hooked up with. He's not ready to leave his wife and family yet, like he seems to be at the end of the story, but something has changed, something is different. Um, you can, the real way that this story defines that and how he is this one kind of person. A lot of the first two sections of this story are designed to teach you what kind of person he is so that you can see that change happen to him in the second, in the second half of the story, the third section, the fourth section. The obvious ways um, that this story teaches you that um, are right here at the beginning. He was under 40, but he had a daughter. He'd been married young when he was a student in his second year. Now his wife seemed half as old again as he. Um, and you get this description at the beginning of the story that they are just sick of each other. He hates her. She hates him. He had begun being unfaithful to her long ago. He had been unfaithful to her often, and probably on that account, almost always spoke ill of women. That for him, in general, women are just either his wife, this thing to be annoyed by when he's home, or these random hookups that he has, depending on the circumstance, and then forgets about, brushes off. Um, in the society of men, he was bored and not himself. With them, he was cold and uncommunicative. But when he was in the company of women, he felt free, knew what to say. So you get this description of how 
it is he he has felt most comfortable with these women but they're also just sort of disposable for him except for his wife who, who is basically just his his business partner um raising their children at this point where the story begins um and he means when he sees anna and and plays with her dog as a way to get to talk to her and flirt with her he means for anna to be just another one of these women that he sort of uses and then throws away um, and you get that the scene that always I think shows that best and that teaches you that is in the second section they've been they've been friendly they've been going for walks at the beach um, they go to the beach and then they go back you can see let us go to your hotel he said softly and both walk quickly they go back to her hotel um, this is where they are intimate for the first time they have sex for the first time um, and then you can see their very different reactions to what has happened. Dimitri is, is like, well, I finally got what I wanted. Great, no big deal. Anna, on the other hand, is totally scandalized, totally upset. Um, her face dropped and faded, and on both sides of it, her long hair hung down mournfully. It's wrong, she said. You will be the first to despise me now. And, and Dimitri is like, why are you being so dramatic about this? This is no big deal. He just sits there and eats a watermelon and is like, what is, what is the big deal here? You see, there's a watermelon on the table. Gurov cut himself a slice and began eating it. There followed at least half an hour of silence. She's all upset. She's totally distraught, disgusted with herself. He doesn't comfort her. He just sits there and eats this watermelon. How could I despise you? You don't know what you're saying. God forgive me, she said, and her eyes fill with tears. It's awful. You seem to feel you need to be forgiven. Forgiven? No. I'm a bad, low woman. I despise myself and don't attempt to justify myself. It's not my husband, but myself I have deceived. And, all, and not only just now, I have been deceiving myself for a long time. Girl off the, and then you get this long, she has this long description and explanation of her and how she's just disgusted with herself. Gurov felt bored already listening to her. He was irritated by the naive tone, by this remorse so unexpected and inopportune. But for the tears in her eyes, he might have thought she was jesting or playing a part. So he thinks she's just being melodramatic about this, that, that she's blowing it way out of proportion. I don't understand, he said softly. What is it you want? Um, and she says, I love a pure, honest life. Sin is loathsome to me. I don't know what I'm doing. Um, this is... The, this is the second section, and at the end of this section, if you notice, the affair goes on until her husband calls Anna home, um, and we're back to them at the train station, and she is the one who has to break off the affair because she has to go home to her husband, and Dimitri's response to that is relief. He is like, thank goodness I didn't have to break it off it kept the drama it's her responsibility no big drama she just has to leave um and he is like thank goodness i had the affair it's over I, you know minimal drama no problems now i can go back to my normal life it's also worth talking about that the reasons they are unhappy in their respective marriages are different we talked about dimitri it, he's been, he got married young as anna did but then he and his wife just sort of grow apart and they become just these people who stay together for their kids. They essentially hate each other. Um, he hates her more and more every year. He thinks she's inferior. He, th he thinks she's boring. Anna has a, has a different situation. She is clearly younger than Dimitri. She also got married young, but clearly what has happened is she has just sort of outgrown her husband. She is still growing, changing like almost all of the descriptions of her and especially when she thinks about him are these descriptions of how he is just this boring sort of mediocre bland vanilla person who they got married really young and they were ready to grow together and he stopped growing and just sort of settled into his middle management mediocre life she is still interested in growing and developing and seeing new things and experiencing new things and so she sort of it's not that they grow apart, and maybe they just haven't had a chance to, but she has outgrown him, or she is still growing and changing, and he has not. And, and she has realized that he is limited in a way that she's not comfortable or happy with and is, and is not going to ever be happy with. And so what you get is they both 
are ready to get out of their relationships, but for different reasons. That's really what you get in the third section at the theater. Dimitri, when he comes and finds her, he had no other option. He couldn't just Snapchat her or, or, or call her or find her. He does, When he realizes he can't get over her, he does the only thing he can do. And he does it in the least intrusive way possible. He makes sure that he doesn't, that her husband doesn't find out. He finds her house, um, but then doesn't knock on the, and he knows it's her house because he sees the dog, but he doesn't knock on the door. He doesn't try to contact some servant or anything like that. He waits until they go into a public place. And then at the intermission of the play where they're seeing, he sort of discreetly comes up to her, says, hey, I can't stop thinking about you. I just wanted to let you know and see what you thought about that. He seems to be giving her the option of saying, I made a mistake, get away from me, I never want to see you again, don't, I don't want to ruin my marriage. He seems to be giving her that option because she could say that and then he could just walk away and go home. Instead, what happens is she says, I feel this, she basically says, I feel the same way, I can't stop thinking about it either. Um, and that is what drives you from the third section into the fourth section and drives him to that realization that you give him. He looks in the mirror at the end of the story. If y'all have questions about this story, email me or we can talk about them the next time we Zoom or, or chat or whatever uh, way we're in contact, net, contact next. But that also teaches you or gives you a couple examples of dynamic character um, they are both dynamic characters, though Di and Dimitri and Anna are both dynamic characters, though they are dynamic in different ways. Um, it also gives you a definition of that Aristotle, Aristotelian. It's from a book of his called Poetics. Let's see if we can find that. Here it is right here. Um, Aristotle in the book Poetics introduces a bunch of different concepts. Um, the ones that are really important to us are that reversal and then what you get in this story is recognition. He also taught, the, the third thing he says that's really important in the story is pathos. There's no real literal translation from the ancient Greek to English of pathos. It's something like what we would call plot or conflict or something like that. Um, but what is really important here is the, um, the recognition. Like I said, if you've got questions about that, um, I'm happy to talk about them with you. Um, but that's what's going to be important for you to write about, think about going forward for anything that's on any exam for this story. The one other thing that I want to talk about in this block, of sto in this block and on this recording is this poem which is called For the Life of Him and Her by Reed Whitmore. You can see it there. Um, this is a much more recent poem. This poem's um, less than 10 years old now. Uh, it's from 2012. Uh, and this is a much simpler poem. This is a poem about two people who are in a relationship. Maybe they're married. Maybe there's just um, boyfriend and girlfriend. Um, but they are about, this poem is about how they cannot communicate. And you can see this poem has one, two, three, four. This poem has four stanzas. Um, stanzas one and three are from the female's perspective. Um, stanzas two and four are from the male's perspective, the boyfriend, the husband, um, versus the wife, girlfriend, whatever you want to call her. But what this poem really shows and is really about is this sort of failure of communication, this inability to communicate. The thing that Anna and Dimitri and the lady with the dog really seem to get to and finally arrive at, at the, what happens at the end of the story is they're able to communicate to each other how deep and unstoppable their feelings are for each other, and that's what drives them to what they're going to do late, going forward. For the life of her, she couldn't decide what to wear to the party. All those clothes in the closet, not a thing to wear, nothing to wear, nothing wearable to a party, nothing at all in the closet for a girl to wear. There's the first section of her. She's trying to get dressed for this party. She's standing in front of her closet. She can't find anything she's happy wearing. Um, and, and she knows that it's taken a while and that it's a problem, um, but she just can't find anything she wants to wear. For the life of him, he couldn't imagine what she was doing up there. 
She'd been messing around in that closet for at least an hour, trying on this, trying on that, trying on all those clothes up there, so that they were already late for the party by at least an hour. So he's out there waiting for her. He's like, what, what is going on in there? Um, what, what has been happening? Um, she's been trying on this, trying on that, trying on all those clothes. Um, they're already late for this party. They're both worried about this party, both thinking about this party. He's, he's just ready for her to get ready and go so they can kind of get it over with. She wants to have the perfect outfit for the party. Then you shift back to her. If only he wouldn't stand around in the hall. She could get herself dressed for the party. She knew she could somehow, but he made her so nervous. And here's one of the central ideas, one of the central problems in this. She, he made her so nervous. He was so nervous there in the hall that she didn't think they would get to the party anyhow. So she is in there, and to compound her problem of not knowing what to wear, not feeling good about anything she's got to wear to this party, she knows he's out there waiting for her, and it's just making her more anxious and more stressed out and more nervous. Um, it, and she just needs to walk out there and say, hey, you're making me even more stressed out. Because if she did that, he could say to her, and maybe he needs to walk in and say to her, stop being stressed out about going to this party because he didn't want to go to the party anyhow. And he didn't want to stand and stand in the hall. So he's not wanting to do any of this, these things he's doing that are stressing her out. Everything she is stressed out about, he doesn't really want to do anyway. No big deal. He just hasn't communicated that to her. But he didn't want to tell her. He didn't want to go anyhow. He just didn't want to. That's all. So what you've got, they're having this sort of standoff, this failure of communication standoff, where everything she's stressed out about, if he would just tell her that he doesn't really want to do it, it would resolve it for her. And if she would just come out and say, come out from the closet or the bedroom and say, look, you're really stressing me out. Um, I don't know what to do. It, it might at least resolve the situation. He could help her. They could help each other if they would just communicate. So this is just a pretty simple poem about this gap um, and what the changing perspective from the stanzas going from her to him to her to him shows you is this gap in communication, all these problems that they could easily solve if they just communicate with each other. So that's the lady with the little dog or the lady with the dog, depending on which translation you get, because that story, Anton Chekhov was Russian. Um, so depending on which translation you get, you sometimes see it called the lady with the dog. Sometimes you get the lady with the little dog. You can see here, Wikipedia calls it just the lady with the dog, um, this little Pomeranian. Um, that's the lady with the dog, the Anton Chekhov story, and For the Life of Him and Her by Reed Whitmore, uh, two of the pieces that are in our characters and relationships block. I'm going to get this video uh, posted for you. And if you have questions about either of these, uh, be in touch, and I'll talk to you soon. Thanks, guys.